What's up everyone? Today I want to talk about a meta-level problem I've encountered. Say for example, I've solved a problem using Robin Karp algorithm five months ago. I understood it when I read it, I solved the problem, and I understood the actual implementation of the algorithm and I could write it from scratch and write a working solution. But if I had to write Robin Karp algorithm today, I would not be able to implement it from scratch. I remember the gist of it, but the fact that I don't remember how to actually write it from scratch without any aid makes me feel like I didn't study it properly. So I did some research on how learning works and there's two types of learning, active learning and passive learning. Passive learning is when you actually read something and you think you're familiar with it. So you think you learn it, whereas active learning, you're actively involved in the learning process, whether you're teaching it or you're being tested or you're doing something with it. Now I thought, okay, how can I implement this into my learning? Because I can't keep solving the same exact problem all the time. So after some more research, I found something called Anki. So Anki flashcards is something that a lot of students use, like medical students, where they have to learn a huge amount of information. And after some more research, I found that some developers actually use Anki to learn their programming languages or APIs really well and then their curve for being productive with it really, really shoots up. So I thought, okay, why not take this idea of Anki and apply it to our computer science algorithms? Now I'm gonna show you how I Anki-fied the problem that I taught you guys yesterday. Take a look. Alright guys, now that you looked at my Anki, I'd like to talk about the benefits. Why should I care and why should I put the extra effort to do that? Well, of course, the long-term benefit, the very important one, is that I have to remember it three months or five months or eight months from now. But the short-term benefit is that I get these subtle, deeper level insights. I want to talk about a question that presented itself when I was making the Ankis. So in a regular BFS versus a Dijkstra's, why is it that when we do a visited check, so for example, if visited doesn't contain the node, why do we add the visited over here? Whereas for Dijkstra's, if the distance, which is acting like a visited set, isn't, it, it isn't containing the node, we add the node to the priority queue, but we add it into the distance map over here. Why is in the regular BFS, the queue and the visited set just right next to each other, whereas here it's split up? I thought about it and I realized it's because in Dijkstra's, we don't consider a node to be visited until the priority queue is done sorting it. In other words, we only pull after the priority queue is done sorting it. So that's a subtle insight that I would not have understood or gotten in first glance just by solving the problem as it is. It wasn't until I went back and I tried making specific atomic cards for myself where I realized these subtle differences or these deeper understandings. Now I made this video today not just to talk about what I'm doing or how I'm improving my learning but to open up the floor, floor to you guys and ask you guys how you're optimizing your learning. So you can either comment below or reach out to me directly and share with me how you're actually expediting your learning or you're trying to 
understand things or learn things in a better way. So if you like the video, please thumbs up. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe.